Everywhere I went, my concerts were packed. That was definitely the peak of my career commercially and of my popularity. I remember singing one day in uh, Kansas City, the municipal auditorium. Way down upon the Swanee River, far, far away, there's where my heart is turning ever, there's where the old folks stay. Sad and dreary, everywhere I roam. Oh, fellas, how my heart was. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, but I. Can I have the house lights on, please? I have been going around the country for several years now, and everywhere I have been, I have campaigned tirelessly for equal rights for my people, for our integration at all levels of society. I have also insisted that I will not sing to segregated audiences. I thought that that had been understood by the management of this auditorium when this concert was arranged, but I see that that their pledge has not been honored because we have white people down here and Negro people up there. And for this reason, I'm afraid I have to say that this concert is now over. You see, only the previous week, I had sung the ballad at the Hollywood Bowl with the biggest damn orchestra and chorus you can imagine. Man in white skin will never be free while his black brother is in slavery. 30,000 people cheering me to kingdom come. And you know what? That night at my hotel, they told me that I could not eat in the restaurant, that the guests would not approve. I had to eat upstairs in my room with Frida. Frida Diamond, a close friend. <laughs> and so when I encountered this segregated audience in Kansas City, I figured enough is enough. And I walked right off that stage to my dressing room. And as far as I was concerned, that was that. The manager walks in all arrogant, talking about suing me and all. And I told him I'd see him in court. I had to take a stand, you see. He had the good sense to get the hell out of there. And then the compere, he comes in, but he's begging me, saying that the manager was new. He goes out on stage, and I can hear him from my dressing room, and he, he says, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, and this includes our friends upstairs. We apologize for this unfortunate misunderstanding. Uh, the, the, the management is in talks with Mr. Robeson right now, and we are hoping that he might be persuaded to rejoin us uh, just as soon as is possible. Well, I calm down, and I decide to continue, but I lay it down straight. I see that... Uh, Jim Crow is alive and well in Kansas City tonight, and you know my views. However, I feel that uh, my people upstairs who have paid good, hard-earned money to hear me sing must not be disappointed. And therefore, I will continue with this concert, but for their sake only. Now let there be no doubt that I am continuing only under protest. I will therefore sing for my people upstairs songs of our people's struggle. For we have resisted hundreds of years of slavery, but continue to fight injustice, 
continue to be forced to battle to preserve our dignity. Oh, yes, sir, madam, you may leave if you wish. And be sure to get a refund on your way out. Larry, Battle of Jericho, please. <laughs> Joshua fit the Battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Joshua fit the Battle of Jericho, and the walls come a tumbling down. You may talk about your king of Gideon, you may talk about your man of Saul. There's none like good old Joshua at the Battle of Jericho. Up to the walls of Jericho, he marched with sword in hand. Go blow them ram horns, Joshua cried, cause the battle lamb in my hand. Then the lamb ram sheep horns begin to blow, the trumpets begin to sound. Joshua commanded the children to shout. And the walls come a tumbling down that a morning. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho, and the walls come a tumbling. In.